Hey, it's week 12 of Exploring the Bible. We're getting near the end of Ecclesiastes, and I'm just going to tell you, okay, this week is depressing. Uh, I mean, it, it can be depressing. You can certainly take it that way. You can certainly look at it. Now, we need to understand something about what Solomon writes here, and maybe best to say, understand when Solomon writes. Obviously, this is Old Testament writing, okay? So, so there was real doubt. There wasn't clarity about eternity, uh, about what happened in eternity. There was this idea that you would go down to, to Sheol, you would go to this abode of the dead. Uh, they didn't really know, okay? So as we look at this, we have to understand that there is, a, there is not the clarity that we have today after the resurrection of Christ, which brings clarity to eternity, Okay, there is a sense that there is an eternity and that there is a time with God and there is a time apart from God, but there's not a clarity about it, okay? There's not a clear understanding of it that we have now. So as we look at this, we understand kind of where he is and where the where um, people are theologically, okay, and what they're understanding and what God has communicated with them. And so maybe that helps us as we go into it, but I'm going to tell you it's a little depressing. All right, let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. He says, Indeed, I took all this to heart and explained it all. The righteous. So here it is. He's, he's been writing. Now, this is the ninth chapter. He's been writing a while. He says, I, I've been thinking about it. I've taken it all in. And here's my explanation. The righteous, the wise, and their works are in God's hands. People don't know whether to expect love or hate. Everything lies ahead of them. Everything is the same for everyone. There's one fate for the righteous and the wicked, for the good and the bad, for the clean, the unclean, for the one who sacrifices, the one who does not sacrifice. As it is for the good, so also it is for the sinner. As it is for the one who takes an oath, so also for the one who fears an oath. He says, I've been, I've been thinking about it. I've, I've been studying it. And here's what I figured out. The righteous and the wise... Well, everything they do, that's in God's hand. God has to take care of that. Okay, this is not a bad outlook, right? So, you know, ultimately, my life is in God's hands. Everything that God's going to do is in his hands. And that he, everything that I'm going to do, whatever I do for him, well, that's up to him. It's in his hands. He's got to take care of it, right? Because everything lies ahead of them, which means I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what hold, what the future holds. I, I don't know that. You know, there's a great song. I don't know what the future hold, but holds, but I know who holds the future. All right. So, so what he does know is this, the end is the same for everybody. It all ends the same for everybody. No matter where you are, one fate for the righteous and the wicked. There's one fate, good and bad clean, unclean. You sacrifice, you don't sacrifice. You're good. You're a sinner. You take an oath. You don't take an oath. There's one end. What is that end? Well, it's death, right? There is an evil in all that is done under the sun. There's one fate for everyone. In addition, the hearts of people are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live. After that, they go to the dead. He says there's something, there is an evil there that death is an enemy, right? Death is the enemy and it's an evil enemy. It takes our life from us. And no matter what you do, there's one fate. No matter who you are, there's one fate. Now this could have this sense of then what is the point? Which is kind of the whole deal that he's writing about, right? What's the point? It's all vanity. It's all futility. It's useless. What is the point of all this? Everybody ends up, uh, dying, what's the point, right? You know, people are full of evil. There's madness in their hearts while they live, and then and then you die. But look, he's not done. But there is hope for whoever is joined with all the living, since a live dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead don't know anything. So he says it's better to be alive than to be dead. That's for sure. So you can't look at it and go, look, we're all going to die. What does it matter? What's the point of even trying? What's the point of here? But but he says, no, but look, you are alive. And so so it's better to be a live dog than a dead lion, right? You, you're still alive, right? Uh, the living know you're going to die. The dead don't know anything, right? There's no longer reward for them. The memory of them is forgotten. Their love, their hate, their envy have already disappeared. There is no longer a portion for them and all that is done under the sun. They have lost their time here on earth is done. They're over. They're in the ground. And nope, you're going to have a funeral. You're going to think about them. But look, your memory is going to fade. The memory of that person is going to go away. It's over, right? 
So what do you do? How do you, what do you do here? How do you live your life here if there's no point to it, if it's all useless? Enjoy life with the wife you love all the days of your fleeting life, this fleeting life which has been given to you under the sun, all your fleeting days. I mean, he has to throw that in there, right? He can't just say, enjoy life with the wife you love all the days of your life which has been given to you under the sun, all your days. He has to put fleeting, a little adjective. It's going, it's going to go like that. It's quick. We're not here on this life, on this earth, very long alive. We're just not. It's, it may seem like it's a long time, but it really is just a few moments in comparison to all of history. But while you're here, enjoy life. right? Enjoy life with your wife, for that is your portion in life and in your struggle under the sun. This is the time you have. Enjoy it. It's a struggle, yes, but this is it. This is the life you have. You need to enjoy this life. Whatever your hands find to do, do with all your strength, because there is no work, planning, knowledge, or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. And while you're here, do your work and do it well. Do it with everything you've got. Because when you die, there's, there's, it's gone. You can't do it then. So do it now. Live this life. Part of Ecclesiastes, part of the message, we're going to see the rest of it, okay, next week. But part of his message is this is your life. Live your life now. I'm going to tell you that today there are a lot of people that are questioning why even try. Why even go? What is the point? Why even go through this life? There are a lot of young people often get to that question they, because they look at the world and they see this, this struggle with life and people are dying and it doesn't matter if they're good or bad. They're all going to end up in this. They're all dead. His, his message is, yeah, but you're not dead. You're alive. So live your life. Enjoy this life. Here's wisdom, okay? Wisdom says live your life and honor God with that life. Honor God with that life. Enjoy it. Enjoy it in his presence and honor him. Don't be a fool, right? Don't act a fool. Be wise in how you do it, but enjoy it because this is the life. This is all there is. This this is it right here. You don't get the second shot at this life here on earth. So enjoy this life. Live it in honor of God and live it in a way that that is not um, foolish, is not wicked, but in a way that honors the Lord. That's that's a big part of his message, okay? Because you're going to die. It's going to happen. Everybody is. And the response to that is not to say, well, what does it matter then? The response to that is to say, well, I've only got a little bit of time here. I better make it count. I better do what I can here because I won't be able to do it later. I can't do it after I die. I can't do it. I've got to do it here. All right? Don't take this as the depression side of it because that's how i mean that's really what solomon's speaking against he's speaking against that depression side and saying this is it this is your life enjoy it enjoy this life because this is the only one you get this is your shot at life make it count do something that matters make a difference while you're here hey thanks for watching i hope that's helped as you study and prepare as you're teaching or you're just studying the, the lesson god bless you thanks for watching really subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already like comment share it with others let them know about this channel so they can get them also all right we got one more week we'll do it let's finish it well we'll see you next time